Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we give God praise. Oh, good morning, saints. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. I thank God for this morning. I thank you for that prayer, Elder Harris, that you Amen. just prayed. I give Amen. God, I give God praise. Hallelujah. I give God Hallelujah. thanks. Come on now. I thank him. Come on. God is too good to us. Oh, yes. Because he's been so good to us. So good. Yes, he has. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Elder, I think you need to look at you. All the time. Thank you, Jesus. I I like to just start off with that prayer because he's already prayed. But I just going to say a little short prayer. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for this morning, Father God. Yes, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to see this morning. We thank you, Father, for our night's rest we had last night. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, we give you praise because without you, we can't make it. We can't Amen. make it. So, Father God, I come before the people this morning. I'm asking, Lord Jesus, that you will step me aside, Lord, because I'm in your way. I need to get out of your way and let you come forth. Yes, Lord. And I give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord. I come. Father God, in obedience to you, Lord Jesus, to bring forth the word that you've given me, Lord Jesus. You've given me so much, and you're continually to give to me. What I don't give today, Father God, you've given to me. You already showed up. You showed up at the house this morning, and I give you praise, and I thank you. I thank you because you're showing up encourage me more and more. And I just lift you up this morning. And I praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I give thank God you, praise Jesus. to be before you this morning. I'm thanking God each and every day for what he's doing in my life. Amen. I see change, not even just because I'm aging, <laughs> I see change in my spiritual life. And I just give Amen. God praise for that. My book this morning is the book of Lamentation. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the book first. We all know that this book was written by Prophet Jeremiah. And this book is a collection of poetic laments for the destruction of Jerusalem in 586 BCE. One of the key themes of this book is justice. Praise God. I'm just going to recap just a little before I just get mainly in the lesson. For this year, Lamentation being my book, I was able to come before you three times this year. The first time I came before you, we talked about something that's going on in the world that has been going on in the world that is still going on in the world and that is sin it's been there it's there and we know that it can be painful we know that it can be hurtful it can be embarrassing this is what jeremiah was facing with the people because their sin had caused great lemon the second time i was before you we talked about all the causes of the sin and how it upset god so much so much that he took his hand off and over them. And the third time I came up before you, we talked about what all that they went through, God's love, his mercy, his compassion, and mainly his faithfulness was among them all the time. That not it wonderful to know that whatever you go through, everything that you go through, God is there. He's there. Just like this pandemic, that hit us, um, hit the whole world. Mm -hmm. If we would have thought five years ago would this would happen, we never would have just got our mind to thinking, oh, I'm not going to prepare for that because it's not going to happen. But it hit the world so fast that we knew that, just like I heard Sister Patty said, oh, I think it was last Wednesday, about we never would have thought we'd be wearing masks. We read about it in other countries and, and we, you know, seen it everywhere else on television but never 
we, we thought the whole world, the whole world had to do it. But it was just something to think about, mm-hmm. you know. Praise God. This is why our pastor, Pastor George Hack, can tell us all the time to trust God. Trust God. Not only because of the pandemic came up, she always tell us to trust God. She knew our concern when the vaccine situation came up, whether yay or nay, you know, but she constantly said in her sweet voice, just trust God. So we all know that trials and tribulations are going to come in our life. We already know this. But this is when God wants us to never lose heart. He wants us to have confidence. He wants us to have hope. And, and because he wants us to know that when he take us through something, he's going to bring us out of it. Praise God. So Jeremiah, you know, we have said this. I know that Sister Patsy uh, teaches the book of Jeremiah. And we, I know we have said it several times that he has been labeled as the uh, weeping prophet. You know, every time somebody is labeled as such a name, you know, uh, that person is uh, maybe that, but it's not all necessary that that person is just that, you know, because he was chosen to reveal the sins of the people and punishment that was to come. You know, I, I had thought about that. I said, you know what, when you chosen by God, that, you know, that's an honor. That's a privilege. Amen. Your next step should be to do what God requires of you. You don't hesitate about it when God calls you. You don't think about it. You just do it. In other words, you just obey. Now, of course, Jeremiah did not like the ways that God dealt with the people. He didn't like it, but he was obedient. And so he was labeled then as a suffering prophet. See, like I said before, he wasn't just a weeping prophet. He was labeled then as a suffering prophet. You know, sometimes we got to take something that we may not like, but suffer for God's sake and be obedient to what God tells us. The scripture says uh, in John 14, 15, it says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. We love him, right? Mm-hmm. We say we love him. Now, what we say, we got to really be truthful with that. Right. We love him. We love him. And Luke 6, verse 46 says, why do you call, the, call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I tell you? God had given Jeremiah a strong word, and he challenged Jeremiah to execute that word. This is when they called him the weeping prophet. This is when they called him. And they only called him this only because his heart was so tender. You know, Jeremiah was a good man, a faithful man, and he was definitely faithful to God. In his early years of being a prophet, he was then labeled as a preaching prophet preaching all throughout uh, Israel and preaching and doing what God had required of him. You know, when God required of you, he expects you to do. He expects you to do. So I just wanted to share that little bit with you. I'm so happy just to see my son walking. I give God praise for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. So to get into this book, this is our summary for the year. Uh, Elder wanted us to give our summary so this is my summary um it's only this book is only five chapters five chapters do you know how many times i went back and read that five chapters so many times so many times i feel like you know uh, i know i know of jeremiah but you know reading about him so much it felt like oh i know him i know you know like you know you 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 get it get personal with you so i kept reading it and so what i'm gonna do in this summary what god has allowed me to do i'm gonna sum up every uh chapter and it won't be long i know we only have an hour before you but it won't be long and i pray i pray that that some nugget or all nuggets that somebody will grab something from this from this lesson mm-hmm. so the first chapter i'm gonna start with the first chapter and it deals with jerusalem crying over their loss their 
affliction and Jude, um, and they cried over their loss, their affliction and Judah's captivity in Babylon, and the utter and complete devastation, devastation suffered. Now, the tapture of this chapter and the book are woven from the threads of Israel, their unrepentant sinfulness, their rebellion, cruel oppression from the enemies, God's harsh and coordinated hands of judgment on that oppression, and last, the tragic and pathetic desolation which followed. Now, Jeremiah, now he did weep over the situation, but he sees the righteousness and justice of God against Jerusalem because they had become so unclean. So he knew that God must deal with his people. You know, I thought about that. You know, God must deal with that, with your sin, but that's it. He's going to deal with. Have you ever cried so hard over a situation, but you knew deep down in your heart that God had to deal with that? He, he has to deal with it. I think sometimes people think God overlooks sin. I really do. I think sometimes people think, oh, you know, they, because of their action, because of their action, I think they think that God overlooks sin, especially when they do things and they know that it's wrong. And they know that it's wrong. They continue to do, oh, I know I was wrong for that, but they still doing it. God don't overlook sin. It's like they don't even believe or know that God is real. He's real. And that maybe, oh, maybe he don't forgot about it. Or oh, 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 they think that uh, it's forgotten. It's forgotten. If you sin, it's not forgotten. Uh, but God has not, I'm here to tell you, God has not forgot about it. And he will deal with all and every sin. I want to say this. No one unclean is free. I'm going to say it again just in case it, it bypassed somebody just then. No one unclean is free. That's in the first yeah. chapter. That's what God had me to bring out for that. So in the second chapter, it deals with when, when the Lord destroyed Jerusalem. God delivered divine punishment. We all know God punishment. We all know what it is, right? Let me just re remind you. It is spiritual death and separation from God in a place of judgment called hell. We, we read the scripture all the time, Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. I didn't, I didn't write that. For the wages of sin is death. Even through Israel downfall is through Babylon, Babylon. God made it clear that he's the one bringing this punishment upon his people like an enemy in their horrific ways to strive. You remember I just said like an enemy? God wants the best for them as he wants the best for us. He never wants to become our enemy. God never wants to become our enemy, nor does he want any one of us to perish. God is a good God. God is a faithful God. God is a loving God. I know nobody in here would disagree with me with that. But the people here, they were devastated. All the elders, the daughters, the virgin, the mothers, the prophet, and all who sinned were helpless and hopeless in this situation. They had found that deliverance from sin had not resulted from the message of their false prophets. Enemies ridiculed and pronounced their aggressions against the hated Jerusalem. Jeremiah, he not only weak, but he was physically sick because of the fall because of the fallen people. He cared so much for them. God cares so much for us too, and it hurts him when we are not trusting him at his word nor his promises. It hurts him. Amen. It saddened me, and I'm sure also you too. When you see family members or you see friends living day by day without God in their life Amen. or not even trying to seek him, it saddened me. Sometimes you, you sit, you want to just cry. You just want to, you know the feeling when you see, see family members or friends 
that's not even attempting to seek the Lord. Sure enough, the world is falling apart. It doesn't mean we have to fall apart either. With God, life is actually falling into place for those who serve him. Where the world is at this very moment, we have people around us that have no clue what the world is up against right now or what's coming. We have people, look at, look at the world around you. We have people that has no clue where the world is at right now. They live in day to day life like God promised them tomorrow. They give no thanks to God for being, for still being here. Y'all see on the news where there's so many have died this year. I've never in my whole life seen that many people die in a one year, in one month. Mm -hmm. But so many in the last two years have left this world. Tomorrow is not promised to us. Do, do, do we even know why we still here? We need to be thanking God. It hurts me too to see family and friend put everything before God. Oh yeah. yeah. They'll make an effort. This is not even on my note. God, you you bring it out. You bring it out. I'm gonna speak it. I, I'm, you just bring it on out. They put everything before God. They'll go to games, they'll go to concert, they'll go to any other event, but they'll make an excuse why they ain't coming to church. Amen. And they ain't got the nerve to stand before you and give the excuse why they don't why they don't want to go to church. Then why you go here and why you go there? God is near. He's very near. I don't think a lot of people know that know that. Through this pandemic, a lot of lives were lost. Time is winding up, and we witness every day. Now I didn't say someday, I said we witness every day. But some are not yet in the picture, not trying to get it right while there's still time. It's sad. It's very sad. You know, today's world reminds me of how uh, Noah tried to tell the people and the people just would not listen. And when God came, it was too late. It's sad to say that's, that's what's going to happen to a lot of people. It's, they're going to start crying out, Lord, Lord, too late. You know, we all need desperate prayer. We all need to cry out to God. Amen. You know, I listen diligently when pastor speaks, all right. when she is ministering. I know God tells her a lot. I know God shows her a lot. I know Amen. God talks to her. I don't even know why I'm going here, but I know sometimes when she's up ministering or any of the elders or anyone is up ministering, I have a strange look on my face because most of y'all in here know that my hearing, there's a lot of times I can't make out what a lot of people are saying. So I probably have the strangest look on my face, but sometimes I have to read lips. But I want to hear what God says. Right. I want to do what God says. I want to live how God want me to live. So I am trying to get it. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know why I'm going here, but 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 some people think that that they, they can hide things from pastor. And I, I'm not saying my pastor. Right. I said right. pastors. I ha that's an S on it. Some people think that they can hide things from pastor. Lord, I, this might not have nothing to do with with, with my book of lamentation, but God gave it to me, and I'm going I'm going to use it. But but but. You know, pastors may not see uh, what's going on outside your life, outside of church, but God sees, but he knows. Amen. But pastors, see, oh, what an S. I ain't just talking about my pastor. I'm talking about all the ministers. When they urge us to do right by God, not by them, they want you to do right by God. You know, a lot of people want to do what, oh, I got to do what the pastor said. You better do what the pastor said. If, if God is talking to them, you better do what the pastor says. Because there are so, there was, among these people here in Jerusalem, there was so much wickedness and so much sin among them that the Lord destroyed without pity. God will destroy you without pity. Because if he's sending people before us telling us, why are you not listening? 
Luke 12 and verse 2 and 3 says, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which is, and that which is, that has, wait, excuse me, I'm sorry. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetop. See, sin will be uncovered. The truth will come forth. And God's behavior and action will be vindicated. In other, in other words, it'll be justified. Y'all remember the saying that you used to hear long ago, but maybe we didn't take it as serious, but I know some did. What's done in the dark will come to light. Uh -huh. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed. So some people may think that the things they do is done in secret, but God will bring it out in the open. Oh, yes, he will. He'll bring it out. He might take 20, 30 years, but he's going to be on his time, mm -hmm. but he's going to bring it out. Nothing is done in secret from the law if it's wrong. You can read it, uh, Luke 8 and 17 at your time, at your time. but it, I'll tell you what it says. It says nothing is hidden. Luke 8, 17, nothing is hidden. Jeremiah, he urges them to cry out in the night and pour out their hearts to God, mainly for the hopeless and helpless state Jerusalem and God's people were in. He pleaded with God for his wayward but severely stricken people. They were so stubborn and selfish, hard to control, and had unpredictable ways. So hardship and trials are often the thing God used to draw his people back to him. But it is very hard, very hard. That's what God had me to bring out in chapter 2. So chapter 3, they found out the meaning of suffering. This had become as a personal grief. Have anyone ever felt like their grief was personal? I'm sure many have. For an example, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use this as an example. Let's say one of your children made a wrong decision that caused disappointment in their life, in, in the whole family life, around your friend's life, the, you know, the entire family. Now they are facing suffering and pain because they did not listen and they did not take the counseling that was given to them. That's how God felt about Israel. Mm -hmm. Another verse I want to give you, Psalm 34, verse 17 and 18, it says, The righteous called to the Lord, and he listened. He rescued them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who are discouraged. He saved those who have lost all hope. Even though they, there are some uh, that may have made bad decisions in their life and separated themselves from God, God is telling you right now, here today, every day, he's waiting. His arm is open, waiting for you. And he'll take you back and help you get it right. Now, what, what, how awesome is that? It becomes a personal grief, the fact that this central chapter here is three times longer. It is. It's three times longer than the other four. Emphasize its vital message. It's, 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 this is very personal. Jeremiah, Jeremiah relates the affliction, the anguish, and the desperate state that he is in. He feels as that sinking feeling within his soul because God had abandoned him in times of trouble and left him to find his way out of the dark. God also had filled his heart with bitterness, but he cried out to God. I hear pastors say a lot of times, cry out to him, cry out to me. I sit there all, oh gosh, she's talking to me. Cry out to him, Sister Harris, cry out to him. 
But we got to remember there is promised grace in all of this. Jeremiah fixed his mind on God's mercies and compassion. He remind himself of God's daily faithfulness and he hoped in the Lord. And he hopes in him. This is how we need to be. Remind ourselves of who we serve and why we serve him. Fix our mind on his mercy and compassion. We All we got to do is look around and see what God done already done for you and still doing for you. Have great faith. I heard Evangelist Stummerfield preached on great faith. Have great faith in God. And know that he will do everything, everything he promised. He'll do everything he promised. Jeremiah knows that grace is both promised and available now for those who walk with God, even in hard times. This is where we really need to recognize God when 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 we're in um when we're going through hard times. This is when you really need to see God. You need to see what He's doing when you're coming through those hard times. In the pits of a despair, he looked to the Lord for that grace. He hopes in him and quietly waits for him to act. Jeremiah began to petition God, making humble requests, especially for courage and strength. Have you ever made a, a petition to God? I'm sure we have all made requests. Yeah. I'm sure of it. Something that we desire. Everything is on his timing now. And we respect that because it's on God's timing. Also, starting from the basis that God is just in his punishment of men, Jeremiah urges himself and others to search within and then turn back to God. He started by confessing sin and acknowledging God's righteousness this requires true sorrow and seeking God continually. A few weeks ago, I believe it was pastor that told us, it's time to seek the Lord. It's time to seek the Lord. Jeremiah knows that God had drawn close to him and has redeemed him. He commit his enemies to God for him to deal with them. So in the fourth chapter, this is when the attack on Jerusalem happened. They were so devastated, as I said earlier, and were brought so low that it was a city of contrast. One, the old blessing are replaced by the current desolation. Two, God and gold and valuable jewel were worthless. Three, compassion and the ability to nurse babies were gone. Four, the finer things of life, such as delicacy and scarlet, had been reduced to desolation and to the ash heap. And five, the radiance, Nazareth people, this is the princess, now look like pitiful skeleton. And six, cannibalism is practiced by those who love their children. They love their children so much. To the fact they had to start eating their kids to survive. My granddaughter just had my first great grandbaby. I could not even imagine this. I can't even imagine this that these people had to go through, had to eat their own kids to survive. Because of Jerusalem's sin, God decreed its overthrow and it is now hopeless in its misery. Kings of other nations would not believe that all this was possible. Praise God. The sins of the prophet and the priest in shedding innocent blood are cited as the reason for this catastrophe. Even in this, the citizens of Jerusalem were looking to be saved by another nation that could not deliver them. This was definitely a sudden change in them. In them. Instead, they invaded, their invader, the Babylonian army, who was under Nebuchadnezzar, pursued them cruelly and laid them low. Nearby, 
Edom had no cause to rejoice in Jerusalem's downfall. Jerusalem's punishment will spread to Edom, and the cup of suffering will continue because of Edom's sin. So they, too, drink from the cup of, of the Lord's anger. So, in the last chapter, then that's chapter 5, this last chapter, Jeremiah was a humble prayer presenting to the Lord their great misery, mercy, mercy. He was confessing their sins and imploring deliverance. You know, I uh, as I was reading this, I jump on my phone every now and then and, and something, it got, God is good. He popped something up and I said, well, well, you know, Lord, I'll read that just right now. I'll just read this right now. There is power in prayer. When you pray, God listens. When you pray, storms get still. When you pray, doors open. When you pray, relationship get restored. When you pray, sickness get healed. When you pray, hope get rekindled. When you pray, strength is renewed. When you pray, answers come. Don't ever lose, no, don't lose faith ever for what you are praying for. God is faithful. His answer will come, not at your time, but at the present time. Amen. I just had to read that. This took me back to when David prayed for deliverance from the enemy. Remember that? When David prayed for the living, and, and, and Psalms 143, he cried out. He cried out to the Lord. A prayer where he learned from long, painful experience that doing one's own would generally lead to disaster. David found that out. Oh yeah, he, he, he found it out, trust me. And it was a strong prayer where his soul thirsts for Jesus. He cried out. I wanted to read that, 143, and I just want to show what he cried out, how he cried out. He said, hear my prayer, O Lord. I remember the days of old. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. Hear me speedily, O Lord. Deliver me, O Lord. Teach me to do thy will. Quicken me, O Lord. And the last thing he said, and of thy mercy, cut off my enemies and destroy all of them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. Are you, are you God's servant? We should never have to wait till disaster come to call on Jesus. We should call on him all the time. When Jeremiah was praying to the Lord, he asked God to remember what has come upon his people. He even lists the reproaches and terrible suffering which the inhabitants of Jerusalem had suffered. He said uh, that it was loss of inherit and home, inheritance and home, death of parents and spouses. There was no free water, economical need and oppression, Failure of support from expected allies, unworthy, what we just spoke about, unworthy people ruling over them, insufficient food to eat, danger in seeking to get it. It was danger for them to try to get food. You need to thank God for the food in your cabinet right now. There was fever, there was rape, there was murder, even the elders. How much we respect our elders here? The el elders was not respected. There was forced labor, like we talked about earlier. And there was mourning instead of music and joy. There was mourning. All these followed the downfall of Jerusalem. We must recognize that there is no king humanly to follow David because of the sins of Israel against God. Jesus Christ himself 
will be the next and the last king in the line of David. So in restoring in all this, Jeremiah looked to the ongoing sovereignty of God and plead with him to remember them, to turn them back to him, to restore them and renew them. Without stating it specifically, Jeremiah prayer clearly acknowledged God's promises in the path not to reject his people utterly. They needed God's forgiveness. They needed him to restore them and bring them back to him. Only God can restore our soul. He To repair us, to renovate us, and return to us. I love it when Sister Petty loved to read Psalms 100 all the time. When you think about for, uh, verse 3 in Psalms 100, it tells us we are the sheep of his pastor. He made us. We are his people. We are his. And I want you to remember. So in my closing, I got notes all over the place. In my closing here, I, I, I it's short, but I pray that someone got something. In my closing, praying to our Lord and Savior is powerful. I want you to remember this. Our tears, they are prayers too. Our tears, they are prayers too. They travel to God when we cannot speak. Matter of fact, I forgot to give my title. My title, if I was to use a title, is the tears of God. Tears are prayers too. Everyone in here know the Lord's prayer. They know who they're praying to. They know what they're praying for. And they know why they are praying. But you know, there are people that can quote the Lord's prayer like a pro, but they don't know who they're praying to, what they're praying for, and why they're praying. Some people. When we pray, we got to call his name out specifically. Our Father. Amen. Our Father. We got to make it known who we talking to, who are in heaven. We're talking to God, our who are in heaven. Then we recognize him. Hallowed be thy name. Hallow is holy. His name is holy. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Whatever we do, whatever we are doing down here should be the same as what we will do in heaven. Let me say it again. Whatever we are doing down here should be the same as what we will do in heaven. Remember what Pastor said a few weeks ago. And I'm going to say it just like she said it. And I think you said it this way. Ain't no sin going to heaven. <laughs> but give us this day our daily bread. And forgive our trespassing as we forgive those who trespasses against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen god's rule on earth is what every true believer ought to strive for as Jesus instructed in Matthew 6 and 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. And everyone who put that goal first in mind and heart will pray every day in whatever words he moved to you. In, in whatever word he is moved to you. For the very same thing Jesus said, we should pray for thy kingdom come. You see, prayer helps you develop a relationship with God. Oh, it does. Yes, Sister Harry, you had to find that out. 
Prayer helps you to develop a relationship with God. When you pray, he listens. He wants to hear from you, though. And he wants to talk to you. In Matthew 6 and 6, God said, But thy, when thy prayers enter into thy closet, and when thy has shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which see it in secret shall reward thee openly. You see, Jeremiah was feeling what God felt. Jeremiah was feeling that. God used Jeremiah to express his sorrow, his disappointment, and tears over the people of Israel. So the last verse I want to share with you, we should have a praise, a, a praise and a mind frame like David did. And it's coming from Psalms 56, verses 8 through 13. Before I give this, read this to you. And this is my last, and I'm, I'm, I'm finished already. Let me tell you how good God is. This, my husband and I got this little chart, and I'm sure you all have one where you read it daily scriptures every day. And the scripture that came up today was this scripture that I'm closing with. Psalm 56, verse 8 was the scripture that came up. But what I'm going to read to you is Psalm 56, 8 through 13. Now, I'm going to be reading from the NLT version, so um, it'll be a little different, but the same thing. Verse 8, this is the scripture that was on our little thing this morning. You keep track of all my sorrow. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. My enemies will retreat when I call to you for help. This I know, God is on my side. When God showed that scripture up this morning, I know that God is on my side. Amen. I praise God for what he has promised. Yes, I praise the Lord for what he has promised. I trust in God. So why should I be afraid? Yes, Sister Harry, why should you be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? I will fulfill my vows to you, O oh God, and will offer a sacrifice of thanks for your help. <clears throat> Excuse me. For you have rescued me from death. You have kept my feet from slipping. So now I can walk in your presence, O oh God, in your life-giving light. So I say to you again, our tears are prayers too. God responds to our tears, everybody. We find strength and comfort by crying out to God in prayer. He is always there for us to ease our sorrow and help us deal with pain and suffering. Tears represent realization, acceptance, and embracement. And I want to finish this with realization of truth, acceptance of reality, and embracement of a new self. And I that's all I have for you this morning. And I give God praise that something was said that you would grab you grabbed hold of. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen.